Internet! <laughs> oh, what up, Internet? It is the middle of the week here in America. In America, it's the middle of the week. Are you excited for the very center of the middle of the week? Because that's right now. Why is the camera falling down? There we go. <laughs> oh, look at that. Ah, I feel like I had to fix the camera. What is going on with my hair? I've been out in the yard all day. Wheelbarrow and dirt around. And uh, I bet Vicky Tori is probably in the chat and just figured out that I was doing that. Moving around the dirt. Not that bad, though. Uh, it's good stuff. And, uh, you know, so don't want to spoil the surprises, you know. Um, and uh, as we warm up here on the live show, the live show, we shall say hello to some people in the chat. You know why? Because it's a great way to let people come in the door. You know, they're wandering in. And they're, they're going to say hi, or they're not going to say hi. You know, they're wandering in. They're coming on in, straggling in the door. You know, and that's why, you know, we got to share it out there and all that kind of stuff. Because they just come meandering in. We only, I think there was like 30 people here early, which is amazing. And I must say thanks to you guys. Uh, but we got to say first to the chat today. Chicken Lips, too. Coming in very, very first to the chat. Great work, my friend. Uh, as a request the other day, I got from Charlie List. He was like, hey, man, can you open the chat earlier? Um, because as you guys know, I'd normally open the chat probably a half an hour or something like that beforehand. Uh, so I'm doing uh, my due diligence here to get it open earlier. Uh, so we got it up you know, a little bit early today, but uh, I'll be doing better to get him up earlier and earlier than that. But also, let's bear in mind, because the weather is beautiful outside, it is reminding me that the schedule, the schedule will be changing uh, coming up fairly soon, you guys. So um, I would keep that in mind if you're... Uh, a big fan or whatever and you feel like you got to turn on the notifications and stuff but the beautiful weather outside reminds me there is travel days coming up um i will be in michigan and uh I, my studio is not in michigan so i don't think i'll be able to do live streams from michigan uh i don't know if i'm going to be able to edit video on the road so um that's going to be problematic because i don't really have a way to uh do all that but I just got immediately sidebarred from saying hi to people. Amazing. I did a smooth job there talking about random stuff. But um, I will be on the road, and there are a bunch of trips scheduled this year uh, throughout the summer months and whatnot. So uh, I just think the uh, the beautiful weather was reminding me that the schedule will be a changing. So um, share it out there and hit the like and whatever and all that turn on those notifications and stuff because it will become more confusing as time goes on here when i'll be able to actually be live and not gotta do what i can um i gotta do what i can to get things done and uh you know pay the bills and that kind of stuff i got a bunch of stuff i gotta i gots to do we got a bunch of crazy projects that you guys will get to see some of them um i, I, I would I would, I've never been so, um, uh, I've never, I've never been so, what's the word, obtuse, I guess, 
Uh, I've never been so lofty to think that I uh, would be able to um, uh, put all of the projects out there onto YouTube that I do because a bunch of them I, you know, I do projects for other people and stuff. So uh, there will be more uh, of that coming up, especially the summer months and things. So um, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what I can do to get enough videos out and stuff like that. But, um, you know, and, and not here's the thing it sounds like i'm being um it almost fe it feels like i'm sounding obtuse or disingenuous or something like that but um you know the reality is everything is great everything is fantastic i'm not uh i'm, I'm not freaking out or stressed out or any of that kind of stuff but um you know, realistically, like the Patreon has, is amazing and we're doing great and everything. But I mean, I, anybody could go on there and look at it and just be like, is that enough money to pay your bills for the whole month? It's not. So um, and, you know, because the summer months are coming up, a lot more projects are going on. So um, and I'll see what I can do. But I do uh, I do know that when I'm out on the road, I can't do the live stream. Um, so that and those trips are coming up fairly soon. They're coming up. um Let's see the like a week from today. So we got a Friday show, a Monday show, and a Wednesday show, and then uh, I'll be flying around uh, to Michigan and Germany. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, I hope to I hope to get be able to make a bunch of videos after the fact of all that stuff and everything. So. Um, that'll be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, the, the beautiful weather is reminding me that there's a bunch of stuff coming up, but let's say hi to some people in the chat. Uh, Ed's fish is here. Bald and dangerous came in nice and early. Good to see you. Uh, Savannah, the aqua llamas here early. Keith Bordley, AJ aquarium, uh, Jad or Z. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, I don't know if I am or not. Um, let's kind of scroll down here a little bit. And see, Leone Ballantyne is here super early, apparently. Uh, AJ's Aquariums has a question about sumps, uh, about the baffle level, if you guys could remind me about that in a minute. Uh, the Turtle Girl is here. Good to see you. JH Aquatics, Sarah Konopko. Uh, Alyssa Bentley is here. Um, let's see here. Do I have... Oh, okay. There we go. All right, let's start scrolling down. I'm like, where... Where's all the moderators? <laughs> Looks like Dan Squires is all by himself today. Uh, oh, there's Nisi. Okay. Yeah, we've got our, our normal moderators here. I don't know. They're probably out enjoying the sun too, which I'm into. Uh, bump, ba -da -bump, bump, bump. Oh, there's Nisi. Okay. S Spuddy does it. S Spidey. Oh, Spidey does it. Is there any fish that school better than Rummy Nose Tetra? Um, yeah, like lots and lots and lots of fish. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, there are a ton of fish that, that school better. Uh, uh, any rasboras, uh, tiger, uh, barbs, any of the barbs, uh, just any small schooling fish. Um, they'll all school up pretty well if you give them the right swimming area and, um, you know, the right conditions and stuff. If they're, uh, hanging around, they'll, they'll hang around in a school. There are quite a quite a few a few fish um you know guppies and platies and uh sword tails and stuff like that they don't have a tendency to school up but any of the the small schooling fish are pretty fairly easy to identify out there um you could probably just google search schooling fish and um the easiest way to find what you're looking for in your tank would be like a google search uh via the parameters of your tank so um Let's say you have a higher pH or a lower pH or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, the standard way that you run your tank, uh, you'll be able to kind of itemize which kind of fish you could be looking for. And then maybe you have a list go to your local fish store and uh, find out what they got out of your list. That's going to be good for your tank. Uh, I try not to fight. I try not to fight my water. You know, I try not to fight my, my tank or my tank water. And uh, the rummy nose are, are a great fish. Uh, for the 240 it's the they're, they're pretty much that's exactly the water parameters they want to be in so um, that's a super easy uh, I, I mean realistically that's a super easy decision to make it's like 
Oh, yeah, get a big old school of Rumino's and stick them in there because that's the water they already want to be. And guess what? I don't really have to do much to, uh, I don't have to, like, change the tank or anything like that. Um, and then, uh, generally speaking, if, um, if you over overfeed, they won't school up very well. Uh, so if you feed them a lot, they won't, they don't school up very well. Uh, generally speaking, uh, it's not like a written in stone rule or anything like that. But, um, if you keep them a little bit fed on the light side, they will school up a little bit, uh, a bit better. And Mateo has the point right there in the chat, which was going to be the other thing that I was going to mention. If you have a some kind of large fish um, that will kind of antagonize them a little bit, <laughs> um, kind of freak them out to think that they might get eaten, they'll they'll school up and bunch up. Uh, if you have them just in a tank, you know, like just an empty tank, um, they will. Um, They'll kind of just be like, oh, hey, there's just nothing else here but us. Uh, and they won't school up all that fantastic. Uh, Phil also says high flow helps schooling. Uh, I believe it does help schooling to a certain degree. Uh, I have pretty high flow in the uh, 240. And uh, it does keep them kind of swimming upstream. Kind of keeps them moving in one direction. So um, it's uh it, it's a good way to add a little bit of flow and that will keep them but um if you're looking to kind of do like uh an aquascape picture where you're trying to get like a tight school that's moving through somewhere um that can be difficult a lot of that has to do with um you know the parameters being right them not being super fed blah 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 blah, blah, blah all that stuff um and uh, also timing you just got to get the timing right to get the, a shot like that if that's what you're looking for uh, Ramino, or, uh, sorry, Rasboras will school up pretty well too. If they're, um, if they're kind of under, under threat a little bit, if there's like kind of a big fish in there, that's like looking around like, Hey buddy, what are you guys doing? Um, they will do that also. Uh, Scott Collier is asking, which is better for grounded plant dwarf sag or pygmy chain sword? Um, which one is better uh it just really comes down to your personal preference uh they're fairly similar in kind of growing time how long it takes for it to fill in so uh one of them i mean dwarf sag might be a little bit faster than pygmy chainsword but uh, i wouldn't worry about it uh as far as that goes but um i don't know which one is better uh, it's more of an aesthetic thing uh, so which ultimately comes down to an opinion if whichever one you like think the, that you like looks better uh, I go for it um, and then depending on like if you're doing a biotope like where it's coming from so uh, if it's coming from uh, if your biotope is your tank is supposed to be a specific area then uh, always check whichever plants you're looking for that if you want to keep them in the same um, you know geographically where it's coming from then that would be a consideration. Uh, but I don't think one is better or worse than the other. I got the pygmy chainsword, but I've had, um, they both irritate me long term. Both of them do. Uh, just because they have a tendency to send their little runner shoots all over the place. And it drives me nuts. And I hate um, having to trim them out. Which the. The, um, the pygmy chainsword that I have right now is probably going to be coming out of the 240. Uh, I'm going to be replacing it with something, but I don't want to spoil it for you guys. I don't want to, I don't want to spoiler alert, you know, I just want to just let you know that that's going to happen at some point in time, right? <laughs> um, Ashley Taylor, I have a wave maker on a tank with 300 green neons in, and they, they are really schooling in fish uh, when the wave maker is on a lot more relaxed and randomly all over the place when it's off. Yeah. Um, yeah. So flow does definitely help to try and keep them together because they, they definitely don't want to be like apart. you know, they want to be schooling together, but you know, Johnny B is asking about my favorite carpet plant. Um, Oh man, I don't know. Uh, I can't really think of what my favorite would be. It really, 
it really comes down to the aesthetic of the tank. You know, if I was trying to do like an Iwagumi or something like that, then obviously like Dwarf Baby Tears or something would, would be pretty cool. Um, I've always played with Pearlweed. Um, Glosso probably would be one of my favorites. Uh, UG would be pretty up there also. What was that Ultracaria Gramnifolia? <laughs> Uh, UG would be up there, but I guess my favorite carpet plant, Stargrass probably, Stargrass probably my favorite, mainly just because of how brilliant the shoots are, um, just how bright, bright, bright green the shoots are on the Stargrass, it really gives a lot of, um, it really gives a lot of contrast if you're shooting video or, um, or pictures. It's just like a really brilliant, uh, it's a really brilliant contrast, uh, plant. Um, let's see, JH Aquatics, it just paid for his Peru tickets. His heart is palpitating, uh, mac and cheese from here on out. That's right. He's going to be doing some mac and cheese diet, uh, rummaging around local parks for <laughs> rutabagas and, random vegetables that may be growing somewhere um that is great to hear uh as far as i know i'm i'm not going to on the peru trip uh it's quite a bit it's quite a bit of money and uh i just don't have it you know I just don't have it to um really invest in it and uh you know realistically uh as far as i know peru will be there next year i could probably try to go um, next year, but in the, in the meantime, right now, it's just, uh, just can't afford it. It's just, uh, it's not even like, a, it's not even like a bootstrap thing. Like lift myself up on my bootstraps and buy a plane ticket. It's just not there. Uh, especially with, uh, all the other projects I got coming down the line. It's just, I just can't throw the money there and, uh, and do it. Uh, Mateo has a great point. He's wondering why, uh, JH just can't swim there. He probably would, um, it might be faster. It might be faster if he swam. <laughs> it's not that far off. Do, 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 do. Uh, Nisi said, 54 Punchy has a 10-gallon jam pack full of dwarf sag. Looks amazing. Um, yeah, I I think, it, you know, a, a complete tank with a complement of uh, the dwarf Sagittaria. Um is uh it's really it's really great looking i mean honestly so uh it's very it's kind of difficult to think like you know if anything is my favorite or not mainly because i i just cycle through so many um i cycle through so many plants and not not to say that like you know like i grow them and throw them out or whatever or anything like that but i'm constantly like oh man i got bored of growing this <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, like okay, I want to, I want to grow something else now. Um, so I, I cycle through quite a bit to not stay. I basically just to not stay bored. You know, if all my tanks, if all my tanks were the same, um, uh, that would drive me nuts. That would drive me crazy if they were all like, if they all were filled with like dwarf baby tears, right? I, I would just be like, this is so boring. Uh, I need to do something else. So that's generally what happens to me is that like, you know, I, I get to a point where I'm like, okay, this tank's all grown in. Uh, what am I doing now? You know, um, so, you know, and I've maintained tanks like long term for sure, which is something I've noticed out there there, uh, with some, some recent people, uh, that I've encountered is that there are not a lot of people out there that have maintained a tank for a really long time. Um, I would think probably for that reason, or maybe because they're new to the hobby. I think probably those two reasons would be the ones that made the most sense, right? Um, they're either new to the hobby or they are like, okay, I've had this for a year like this time to change it. <laughs> Uh, Bare Bottoms is asking if Jimmy put clothes on for dinner. Um, no, why would he? 
As he says, clothes are inconvenient. That's right. Just slow him down. He's a busy guy, you know. He ain't got time for all that. Um, uh, let me check the chat. Oh, yeah. I forgot to say hi to everybody, but hello if I forgot to say hello to you. AJ's Aquariums had a question earlier that I wanted to get to, and uh, I almost missed it, and I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss a thing. Right? You know that? That song? That's the Affleck, right? Wasn't that Affleck who did that song? Um, so, AJ's Aquariums was asking about the sump baffle levels. Now, I know a lot of people out there would be like, baffle? What are you talking about? Sump? What's going on? Uh, the baffle are the vertical pieces that you see inside of a sump tank which is the tank that's underneath. And typically, like in my applications, all my aquariums run off of sumps. Uh, it's my favorite way of filtration. It's my favorite way to turn water over. Um, a matter of fact, you guys will probably see a pretty detailed sump video from the aquarium co-op uh, while we were up there. Kobe and I, we just got done working on a sump there. And uh, what AJ was asking is those baffles, those verticals that go in there, uh, he was asking how, where do you set the height on those? And here's the thing. There is no specific height that you need them to be set to. Uh, it is something that you're going to have to figure out how you want your sump to operate. Typically, the first chamber is going to be the most full. Okay. So the very first chamber where water flows and comes down from the aquarium, that is normally going to be the most full one. Uh, and a lot of your fine filtration will be in that first chamber. Uh, the second chamber, like on my reef tank, needs to be at 8 inches because of my skimmer, right? So my skimmer operates properly in 8 inches of water. So that's where it's set to. I drop the skimmer in there and it works fine. Um, whereas on a planted aquarium or even a cichlid aquarium or anything like that, the second chamber I typically would use for most of the biological media, uh, you know, extra rock, maybe some catapa leaves, most likely some catapa leaves, right? Um, you know, some spare driftwood, probably some plants. Uh, the third chamber would probably is typically um, always plans. I always have plans to make them into... Um, uh, an aquaponics situation, but uh, don't know if I really ever get to it, even though I'm finally working on uh, an aquaponics chamber for all of my sumps. I'm happy to say that I'm actually actively working on that um, finally. So um, I hope to get that out to you guys and show you guys kind of a little bit of what you can do with uh the addition of a sump within your system um that that is also incredibly helpful i think not only for water quality but also you know you can grow an extra abundance of plants down there um the final chamber is normally the return pump uh the return pump going back up to the aquarium so um you know you're gonna kind of kind of have to custom set those to the height that you want depending on what equipment is going to be in there um if you have like uh on my 60 gallon that cube tank that i got it um th so the heater that is in there is actually the fluval the new fluval like c300 whatever it's called um and it needs to have flow that heater needs to have flow on it in order for it to operate properly because it has a built-in thermostat and it's reading a bunch of stuff so it needs to have water moving past it and um, so where I ended up installing it is in a spot right near the last baffle, right? But I ended up drilling some holes in order to keep the flow going right past the heater. So uh, one of the great things about sumps that I feel is um, personally awesome is just how modular they are. You know, you can continue to work on them. You can add things to them. You can improve them and do all that kind of stuff uh, over time. You can go like, hmm, maybe I want to reconfigure this thing and I want to maybe change this a little bit, do this, do that, uh, which I feel is one of the huge, huge benefits of being able to make changes to it. Uh, whereas, 
you know, if you have like an FX six or something like that, it's just kind of doing what it does. Like you're not going to really be able to like add things to it or, uh, you know, improve it or, or whatever. Um, you know, you could basically change the medias out and that's just about it. And, um, so, uh, hopefully that explains, I, I was like, you know, I, he was asking in the chat earlier and I was like, I don't think I could type this out. This can kind of take too long to explain, but, um, there's no specific height for the baffles. That's why, uh, you're finding it difficult to find, uh, a specific height online from like Google searching and stuff. Um, that's probably the biggest problem is that there isn't a specific height that those need to be at. Turtle girl's got to go. See you later, turtle girl. Uh, Freshman Aquatic says, hey, Joel, I was wondering what your thoughts were about low light Tetras. Uh, the non-infused Tetras. I want to get a school for my new 55 and setting up soon and was wondering what you thought about them. Um, oh, the new glow light Tetras. The non-infused ones. Um, I don't know. I think anything that's modified uh, is just... I think... Mm, I think this comes down to more of just... I think that comes down to like a personality trait. You know, just a personally the way I feel about it is... I think anything that's going to be heavily modified like that, I just wouldn't want to support the company that is doing that. Um, I get the appeal of glow light Tetras and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I just wouldn't want to support the company that's doing that, whether or not any, you know, cause the arguing point is, is that like, you know, like the glow neon Tetras, they are supposedly okay or whatever, but <clears throat> It feels like a round and round, um, a round and round argument that's not ever going to get to, um, you know, like no one will ever get to a completion. So I just think like on a personal level, it's like buying free range chicken, right? Uh, I, I'm not saying anybody has to do that or whatever. Um, you know, it's like make a personal decision of what your morality is and then go with that, you know, um, because I, I don't think it's ever going to leave. I don't think it's ever going to go away, but I just feel like, eh, you know, that's why I don't, that's why I don't buy betta fish like at Walmart. Um, not because, not because I have any kind of issue with Walmart specifically with their care or how they buy their fish or any of that kind of stuff. Cause I, I, whatever, but I feel like it's a bigger conversation that Walmart treats even their own employees like garbage. So... I just don't buy anything from them, right? So I think I think that's more of what it boils down to. I think that's, you know, uh, personally, it's just a personal decision. I just wouldn't buy those because I don't want to support what they're doing. Glow light, not glow light. I'm confused. Hmm. Wonder what tetra they meant. Glow light tetras are actually a natural species, not glowfish. Oh man, I was thinking about glowfish. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I was thinking about glowfish. Um uh, as far as like glow light tetras i'm sorry i i figured i thought you were asking about glowfish my bad but i still stand by what i was saying about glowfish okay everybody's saying glow light tetras not glowfish okay uh i don't know i don't understand what the problem would be uh, i don't know i'll look into whatever it is but i i would assume all right, let me go back and look at the question here. How did I screw this up? I was wondering what your thoughts about glow light tetras, the non-infused tetras. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I mean, 
I would imagine that they're just like any other Tetras, realistically. Like, well, I don't know. I mean, what do I think about them? I don't know. I thought we were talking about Glowfish. I don't know. I'm ridiculous. Um, but, sorry, I read your question wrong. Uh, I, what do I think about them? I mean, I think they're cool. I mean, I have... I have Rummy Nose Tetras in my 240, so I think they're pretty cool. I wouldn't see any reason why you shouldn't get them. But I don't know anything. Maybe you guys know something that I don't, that maybe they're capturing them from somewhere they're not supposed to be captured from. I mean, I don't know. But uh, I wouldn't imagine that there's there should be any problem with them. Um, ow. I mean, they're super close. Well, hold on. Uh, as far as I know, they're super closely related to the Rummy Nose Tetras, so I wouldn't... Um, I mean, I would think that I like them. So I don't know. Maybe I screwed that up. I don't know. But either way, I'm going to move on because I'm the only one here talking. <laughs> ah, good times. But either way, I don't know. Maybe re-explain your question. I don't know. Uh, let's see. What uh, What is up? Scottish Aquatics is here. He made the live stream. That is good. Agreed. Uh, and Scottish, I got your message the other day. And yeah, I would like to come up to your fish room at some point in time. Please email me. I cannot have a correspondence through chat posts in the public. So uh, send me an email and let me know what's up. Tell me some secrets about yourself. Um, and wherever, uh, oh man, I don't want to forget your whole name. Ashley Taylor got a message from Ashley Taylor, which, uh, I forget if I emailed, emailed him back or not. Um, uh, but hopefully he'll be at the, um, interzoo. And if we can hang out at interzoo, that would be super cool. I'm looking forward to it. I also found out like George Farmer will be at, uh, inter, interzoo. So we'll probably hang out with him, maybe shoot some weird videos, uh, but I'm getting excited. I'm getting more and more excited. It's suddenly real that I'm going to Germany. So, um, that should be pretty fun. Johnny Zell is asking besides the sump, what's your personal favorite filter, uh, for a 30 gallon and below, um, uh, personal favorite aqua clear hang on backs, uh, aqua clear hang on backs. If I didn't have sump, I would go back to aqua clear hang on backs. They're the best for what you pay for. Um, uh, hands just flat out like just flat out um they're pretty much just like how much they cost and how well they work they're just kind of the best in my opinion those aqua clear hang on backs are just a beast they have a tendency to run forever the plastic is well made so they don't break very often um they're pretty easy to clean you can take the pump out take it apart um you can actually melt the plastic uh, if there is a, some if something gets damaged on the plastic. You can actually repair it yourself. I've repaired those YouTubes a bunch of times that people have like dropped them and stepped on them, I've glued those back together. Um, they have a decent amount of media space for smaller tanks. Uh, I used to have a bunch of them for all the nano tanks I used to run. So, um, and speaking of the old nano tanks I used to run. <clears throat> I have a developing plan in my head. And I don't know if I want to tell you guys about it or not. Are you guys excited about whatever the developing plan is in my head? This could be super cool because phase one. Phase one is already the wheels are rolling on phase one. And phase two is what I could be really, really excited about. Um, and... Um, could be really really excited about phase two which i think you guys might be really excited about ah uh, anyhow i'm gonna spoil it i'm gonna spoil my own surprises you guys excited for 60 gallon more 60 gallon cube tanks because i'm gonna be making more of them i'm pretty excited about that so i'm gonna be building some of those tanks I can't wait. I got ants in my pants uh, to start building them. And um, I even went and got quotes for the for the acrylic yesterday, which 
seemed like a really high quote, so I'm probably going to end up um, going somewhere else. But uh, I'm super excited to start building those, and uh, I wish they were here right now, and I could just start building them right now. But I have other projects to do in the meantime, which means uh, I'm going to be getting a bunch of the plumbing done uh, for motivating water out of the fish room, which is super cool, because that's going to be phase three of that whole or that's phase two of that whole situation, the, um, those cube tanks. Um, they're going to be going in right where I have to drill into the wall and, and do some cutouts on the wall and add some plumbing into the wall. Um, that's, they're going to be going right there. So if we start cutting holes into the walls... Oh my gosh! Leroy Jenkins is here! It's Victoria. Um, but I have to cut the holes in the walls, like right where all that plumbing is going to go and stuff. And then those tanks are going to go right in front of there. And there's a super, 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 super top secret surprise that will be here in probably like a month, maybe longer, maybe longer than a month, um, for the Vicky Toria, which I'm so excited for. And I can't tell you what it is. I just want to show it to you guys when it gets here. And it's like five weeks away. So I doubt anybody will even remember me talking about this, um, five weeks from now. But um, it's going to be super, super fun. So uh, we're going to be doing some some changes to the fish room. That's going to be coming up. And uh, we're going to have a bunch of plumbing going in. We're going to have stuff moving in and doing some really detailed videos on how that's going, uh, how that's going along. And then um, the greenhouse stuff is, 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 is really coming into focus now. Um, we got... Almost all of the beds are done for the garden area. Um, and spoiler alert for Vicky Torre, she's going to come home and realize I moved a bunch of the dirt today. Um, but um, the, uh, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, the greenhouse with the aquaponics and all that stuff is really, that's coming in fairly, fairly soon, which... I'm super excited for. I need to get. I need to get my final drawings done because I'm. I'm so excited to design the, the the greenhouse and get it done, um, and then Vicky and I have to make an agreement on exactly what we want to do. Um, and Scottish says he's he's an iron worker and really handy. If you ever need help, there will be some days where I'll need some help. Um, I do plan on doing some deep barbecue action if people are going to come down and help. Um, so you guys will be fed personally. Um, so, uh, yes, I'm probably going to need Carson. I'll probably need Scottish aquatics and a couple of other guys to come down. Um, you know, maybe a weekend day, or if you have a weekday day off or something like that, uh, we'll probably have just a big shenanigans, uh, a bunch of dudes running saws and, you know, shooting nails into stuff and, screwing things together and all that kind of stuff oh my gosh we got our first super chat of the day you guys we're 41 minutes in we got our first super chat of the day from daryl dimer it's got no question on it it's just a ten dollars well thank you daryl i realize most people don't want to super chat me because i got confused about the the glow light tetras and the glowfish and i've ruined i've ruined my life oh Sorry, I just was, I read it out loud and I was like, it's got to be the glowfish. That's got to be what he's talking about. But it wasn't. I was wrong. Uh, but thank you, Daryl, for the super chat. Our first super chat of the day. Oh my God, I just, there's still got a little bit of coffee in there. Ah! And, and there we go. Okay, cool. It just dripped a little bit. Good thing I got a paint towel right there at the ready. All right. Um, okay. So uh, I'm super excited about some of the changes that are going on. You know, we we just have been at this house for a year just the other day. Um, it's pretty amazing to look back all the changes. It's one of the crazy things to, like, look at YouTube, uh, some of the YouTube videos that I posted and was like, oh, yeah, this house was completely different like a year ago. Um, I'm happy to say that. Uh, you know, Vicky and I are super happy with our house here. Most everything that we've planned on is either in the works or, um, 
you know, it's it's ongoing. Everything here is definitely ongoing, but everything that we were planning on is coming together or at least in the works, you know. Um, so, you know, I'm pretty stoked. And then uh, I'm also pretty stoked about um, being able to get back into, into building some tanks. It's been kind of a long time since I've done any. Um, you know, the, um, so uh, we'll see, like, how it goes. We'll see how it goes or what we're doing. Uh, and, um, as those things come along, of course, I'll be making videos and stuff and you guys will be able to check that out, but I'm pretty stoked about building the greenhouse. I want to, I want to build that greenhouse structure and hopefully my idea is good enough for, uh, my lady to be like, yeah, that sounds dope. And I'll be like, oh yeah, we're going to do it. Um, so we'll see. Oh, man, we got a crazy super chat here. It's super big. It's pounds. It's 33.88. What is it, pence? Is it pence? 33 pounds, 88 pence or something? From James Neesham saying, enjoy your trip to Germany. Well, thank you very much, James. That's a huge super chat. That's not even a question. But, um... Thank you. I appreciate it. That goes right into uh, trying to making it to Germany. It's going to happen. All those tickets are booked. All that stuff is happening. And um, we're headed that direction. And whether Germany's ready or not, we're going to be there. And uh, I've, I've been getting some, um, some of the details on the Interzoo itself. Um, I've been getting some details on this convention, and I'm, I think I'm even more excited for this convention. So uh, a big problem that uh, I think the regular Joes uh, are not allowed in to the Interzoo convention. Uh, it's, it's pretty much like vendors and buyers and uh, professionals and, and stuff like that. So I guess you have to, have to get kind of a pass to get in, but uh, I'm sure that Kobe and I will be doing some like you know, evening dinner, meet and greets or something like that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll be around, you know what I mean? So maybe if you're European and you make the way over there and it's something you want to do, I, I don't know what admission and all that stuff, how that works, but, um, you know, it should be cool. And apparently Saturday we are free on the Saturday day from what I understand. Just got a message earlier that was like, well, Saturday we don't have any obligations. So, Maybe we'll go to some historical sites, which I'm 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 thinking that would probably be the best use of our time to maybe, uh, you know, I'm not 100 percent sure what's near Nuremberg. Um, I'll probably have to, you know, get one of those little traveler books or something like that uh, to find out what's around there. But I, I would like to see some World War II historical sites and maybe things like that uh, from there uh, and and before if there's earlier historical sites so uh, i'm i'm kind of leaning towards that and then going like hey if there's like a fish fam thing and we go <coughs> to like a holocaust museum or something I, i'm not 100 percent uh what i'm talking about historically but maybe if we go to a historical site and there's like a, a lunch spot or something that's near there we can do a fish fam meetup or, or something like that so uh we'll see how it goes uh, Nathan Chang is asking, any things to watch out for when getting new tanks? Do I need to reseal them? Uh, if so, which type of silicone? Um, first of all, if you're getting a new tank, the first thing that I would look for is any scratches. I mean, if there's scratches in a glass tank, good luck. I mean, I know the process for, for buffing out scratches out of glass, and I'm going to tell you something. Uh, go to the dollar a gallon sale and just buy a new dollar per gallon tank because you, not only could you completely ruin yourself with the chemicals, um, you can get seriously poisoned or seriously toxic. Um, you could also break it. And also, even if you did it perfectly, it's a ton of labor. So think of how much you get paid per hour. And if it's going to take you 10 hours to do it, it probably the dollar per gallon sale is going to be a better deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? And just go to work for an extra half of a day or 10 minutes. 
um, and uh, and do that. I think that would probably be the best thing to do. But the first things that you need to check out for is scratches. The second thing you need to check is the seal. So if the silicone is still kind of soft and squishy and doesn't, it's not brittle, it's not cracking, it's um, it's not brittle or cracking or anything like that. Generally, it's still got some suppleness to it. Uh, that should be fine. If there's any really big um, mineral deposits on a tank, oftentimes that is a sign of something that is either been sitting outside for a long time or maybe was used and run half full with nonsense and those kinds of things. So uh, I would, um, I would uh, consider that, make sure that the silicone is still nice and supple. If you should reseal it is if you find out if it's over five years old. Uh, if it's over five years old, seven years is technically when you're supposed to re-silicone an aquarium, a glass aquarium, is every seven years. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking, if, if somebody goes, yeah, it's like five years old, it's probably seven years old or something like that. They probably had it for longer than they think. Um, you're supposed to, you should re-silicone it, um, so, which means you have to take it apart do all that stuff uh and then put it back together which can definitely be worthwhile if you're talking about a bigger tank um or something that like you got for free you know oftentimes you get secondhand tanks for free and um that that can definitely be a great way to go um or maybe you're buying a tank because you want to make sure that it's plate glass so you can drill holes in it right that's also a great way to go most of the new tanks out there nowadays are um, more often than not tempered glass, which you cannot drill. So, uh, there, there are a lot of good reasons to go with some, some used tanks. You can get good deals, especially on large tanks. You're definitely going to save a lot of money, um, with acrylic tanks. It's going to be a different thing to be looking for. If you're looking for acrylic tanks, you want to make sure that there's no crazing, which is all the weird little squares squaggly spider webby looking stuff on any of the seams you want to make sure none of that you're going to make sure there's no bowing in the any of the acrylic if the acrylic is too thin it will bow out uh, it's called deflection is what they the pros would call it oh does this acrylic have any deflection ball which is super easy to check because you can go to the hardware store and get yourself a like a four dollar t-square or a speed square sorry a triangle square uh, you can get one of those and just put it on the bottom, see if it, see if the acrylic's straight or not. Uh, see if it's still at 90 degrees angles like it's supposed to be. Uh, makes it super easy to check that. Uh, so you want to make sure that the seams are good with no and there's no crazing around the tank. Scratches in an acrylic tank isn't that big of a deal because polishing an acrylic tank is actually much, 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 much easier than polishing um, glass. Uh, Niz the one says ceiling tank scares my skill level. Uh, I would not be super stressed about it, you guys, um, because if you are going to re-silicone a tank together, which means you're gonna you're gonna take it all apart, you're gonna clean all the silicone off, you're gonna put it back together again. It has to cure for like a week, okay? Which means you're probably not gonna put it on, and you're not gonna build it on the stand where it's gonna go. Uh, you're probably gonna build it in your garage or some kind of wood shop or your barn. I don't know. I don't know where you're going to build it, but it's probably not. Um, uh, it's probably not going to um, be sitting exactly where it's going to be installed. So it will need a week to cure. So silicone needs approximately a week at ambient room temperature around 68 to 72 degrees. It takes about a week for it to fully cure before you put water in it. So it's probably going to be sitting somewhere where if you do fill it up with water and it leaks, not a big deal. Because you're probably going to build it somewhere where it's like concrete floor or something like that. Scottish Aquatics says, hey, Joel, I have extra tanks if you're interested. Um, if they are acrylic, number one. If they are 24 inches tall, number two. And 24 inches front to back, I am interested. Other than that, I don't care. Other than that, I'm not interested at this time to anybody out there. Um, that's not just you Scottish. That's anybody. Everything in my fish room is going to be 24 inch by 24 inch. And that's it. That's that. I just, I made that decision and I'm sticking to it and there's no reason to deviate. 
I have zero reason to deviate unless we did something like uh, some kind of wacky, like a 1,200-gallon version of Corey's tank or something and then took everything else out of there, I don't, you know, which is never going to happen because that's like $20,000. So um, everything in my fish room is going to be 24 front to back and 24 tall and, and, and acrylic. I'm not dealing with glass tanks anymore uh, in my fish room. I like glass tanks still, but it's just not the best thing to have in my fish room. Uh, I want acrylic for its modular nature, the things that I want to do with it, its clarity for shooting, uh, its clarity for shooting video and uh, photos, uh, and its lightweight ability to be able to move move around. So um, that's just how it is. So if I see a, a, a tank like that. Like every once in a while, like I can get a Craigslist post or like a Facebook marketplace. I'll like, oh, there's one there. And I start thinking like, oh, maybe I should get it. Um, but it just, uh, that that's pretty much just a stipulation for my fish room now. I just don't want to, um, I just don't want to deal with anything else, you know, which sounds weird and kind of rude or whatever, but it's not intended to be. Do we have a new, we have a new Patreon message. What happened here? We got new posts by Roger Martinez. Okay, Roger, we'll be getting to those on Friday for the Oceaneers. And thanks for posting into the Patreon. I, I certainly appreciate it. I know it was sounding earlier like I was like getting down on the Patreon thing, but I, I'm not. I'm I'm super zazzed for the Patreon, and I'm wildly encouraged by it. Uh, but it's um, it's one of those things that. I mean, I think anybody that could look at it would go like, oh, you can't make a mortgage payment, buy groceries, pay all the insurances and all that kind of stuff at the level that it's at. Now, it does avail me time to be able to show up here and do the show and stuff um, along with some other projects. But it, you know, it's it's I think anybody could go on there and look at it and go like, oh, it's eleven hundred bucks a month. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, um you know, so I, I do have some other jobs coming up, and uh, that's also that's the reason I was talking about it, is that I am going to have other gigs coming up, which is going to conflict uh, with being able to do the show. Just a warning, you know, just like a shout out to you guys, and just like let you know, like, dude, I'm not intentionally wanting to, to neglect. I want to do as many shows as I can, but uh, we might just end up missing some, and there will be some travel days also. Um, so that's, you know, that's going to be going on. HDJC86 says, love the plan. Got to have two foot, three foot, four foot, six foot, and eight foot lengths, and maybe a big square. <laughs> yeah, I've got the five foot. Uh, I've got the eight foot. I've got the two foot. Um, I might have the four foot. And I guess the six would be two, 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 right? So, yeah, I think I'd, out of the two foot, uh, the three foot's the one I wouldn't have. The three foot would be the one I'd be missing. But, um, yeah, I just, I, the only reason I was bringing that up is because I wanted to just remind people that, uh, I will be traveling and stuff like that. So there will be a fair bit of, uh, upheaval in the regular schedule, you know, just to let you know, uh, Johnny is a Zelaya. I, I bet you I've been saying that wrong for a long time. Uh, just got in crystal red shrimp colony from flip aquatics. They are stunning. When are you going to start your colony? Uh, I don't know. You know, I haven't mentioned who these uh, shrimp paintings, who this shrimp painting was for, uh, but I feel like at this point, like, dude's not texting me back, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's Rob at Flip Aquatics. He's not even texting me his address back to ship him the thing, so um, I don't know when I'll be starting that colony, because dude ain't texting me back, and um, so I don't know. I might end up just selling these on, on the street you know, for, uh, top ramen money, you know? So, uh, I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to start my colony. Um, sort of just like out of respect, like I haven't been looking locally to see who has any, um, any like good looking shrimps or like, or anything like that. But, um, you know, I do live in Western Washington, which there are a lot of really good, um, shrimp keepers around here. So, I may end up having to go local. I don't know. So uh, when am I going to start mine back up? Soon as I can. 
soon as I can. That tank is ready. Uh, that tank is basically matured to the point now, like it's ready to go. I, as you guys know, I accidentally did like a 400% water change on it the other day. Uh, it went through a day of imbalance, right? So it went through one day of imbalance. Like it went like, ah! and then it was just back <laughs> like after a day. Uh, Nisi says, Rob's been busy. Yep. Playing video games. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, but yeah, that tank has been super ready for a shrimp of uh, a shrimp of colony. Colony of shrimp. Um, so that um, that is like ready to go. It's just a matter of like I don't know when is that gonna happen. You know what I mean? So uh, we'll see how it goes. But. Chances are I'm looking at it now. It's probably not going to happen until I get back um, from this trip because we're leaving for a week. Um, we'll be leaving for a week. Or we'll be leaving in a week for like two weeks. And I don't think I'd want to get them in uh, right away. <laughs> People say like shots fired. Like, I, hey, man, I like Rob. I love Rob. He's a great guy. These shrimps are for him. If he wants them, he could send me his address. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, they've been sitting here, and I don't want them in here anymore. So uh, I'm either going to take them out and stick them in a box and put them in the shed or something, and who knows what will happen to them out there. Um, but I'd rather stick them in the mail. So, you know, I you know I send people a message, and they have a week to get back to me. Uh, but... You know, Rob's on YouTube all the time and stuff like that. So, I, you know, just saying, those are for him. I haven't mentioned who it was for because uh, I wanted him to be able to, like, shout it out or do whatever he wanted to do. But those are for Rob at Flip Aquatics. So, um, you know, check out his channel. He's a good guy. I love the dude. Um, he just hasn't got back to me. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll take him with me to Germany and drop him off there. <laughs> That'd be funny. Maybe I'll take uh, version 1.0 with me to Germany because I could just pop the I could just pop the frame off of it and roll it up. I could just pop the frame off of it and roll it up and like stick it in my carry on and then just like give it to somebody at Inner Zoo. Oh, you know what I should do? You know what would be great is if I painted Fluval's Trippin on the first shrimp, this one down here. If I painted Fluval's Trippin on there and gave it to like the Fluval guy. <laughs> now that would be funny. I'd be like, dude, you should put this up in your office. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, hey, Flip Aquatics is a great company. I've talked about them many times. Um, I love those guys. I love Rob. Love hanging out with Rob. Uh, all that stuff, but, uh, you know, so we'll see if it ever, if it ever gets sent to him or not. I don't know. Uh, Billy Kettner says to get it together because uh, you'll take the painting if you don't. Yeah, I think it, uh, realistically it'll come down to like, I'll just post it for sale somewhere and if he wants to buy it or not. <laughs> Uh, Megan Ness has a super chat here. We should grab right before we go to the video segment. Um, 499 super chat saying ammonia zero nitrite zero and nitrate zero pH 6.8. I can never seem to get nitrate eight gallon monthly water change this has been set up for 10 months has Rotella and dwarf sag. Um, my first inclination here would be what's your water test kit? Um, is your water test kit expired? Are you using test strips that maybe have been sitting out near a heat source? Um, I would say what is your test kit would be the first thing. Um, that, that would be the first thing that I, I would look into is the is the 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 test that you're using to make sure you're actually getting like an active actual uh reading from them uh it might be a thing that you might have to 
you might have to test you might have to get a new test kit like it might might be something wrong with your test kit but that that would be the first thing that i would look into but um if your ammonia is at zero your nitrites at zero and your nitrate is at zero um you're either not feeding maybe there's no waste in there whatsoever but it sounds like um you know like one of the problems there is is that you might not have a cycle going um but it sounds like you're only doing a monthly water change. So I have some more questions. So you got the API master test kit. Okay. So that should be fine if you're, um, if you're doing it correctly. Um, but that is kind of weird that you'd be having zero nitrate. Um, but the thing I would wonder is that maybe you're under feeding or under you're having not enough nutrient added in, added in to have enough nitrate left over after the plants are just chewing it through it. Uh, dwarf sage can get growing pretty darn quick and use it up quite a bit. Uh, Rotala is kind of a fast, heavy feeder also. Um, so this might be one of those situations, which I have seen before um, with like little tiny nano shrimp tanks. So I used to have those... Um, I used to have a ton. I used to have them everywhere. Was the um, the Fluval, they're like 12 inch by 12 inch by 12 inch, those little eight gallon cube nano tanks. Um, that, uh, and that's one of the reasons I started EI dosing because like, you know, after the week I would end up with nothing. You know, I would have like nothing in the water, nothing good going on um, and uh, not enough for my plants and stuff. So I either needed to up my feeding or I needed to up my fertilizer. I found it easier to do to up my fertilizer because it was a much more readily available way to maintain my water quality. It's like, you know, if you're just dumping a bunch of food in there, uh, chaos could break loose. It's a lot easier to measure out what you got going on in, the in, in with the fertilizers. Right. So, um, that would be my recommendation would be to see maybe you could like up your fertilizers. Currently I'm using the easy green from aquarium co-op. I'm finding that to be a really easy way to check and see what's up with my nitrates and what's going on and uh, make sure that my nitrate level is high enough by dosing easy green. <laughs> see now I got a mess. Now I got a message from, from Rob. <laughs> He's texting me right now. <laughs> See how that works? I wasn't I wasn't trying to be mean to Rob. I'm just trying to get his freaking address. Otherwise, I'm just going to I'm going to write on the box Ohio. <laughs> so now he's texting me. Um uh, but um uh, yeah, so I'm finding it a lot easier to use the easy green and then just come up with a with a you know, a pretty standard metric to find out where my nitrates are by the end of the week. Um, there are a lot of other fertilizer brands out there that you could use. It just happens to be the one I'm using right now. So it's the one that's kind of fresh in my head as uh, uh, utilizing it, right? So I'm actively utilizing, um, you know, that that easy green right now, just, I just finding it the name of it works out <laughs> like it actually is pretty easy to it is easy to use it so i gotta I, i'm fully honest with that it's a super easy fertilizer to use which you know um so i'm getting about my 20 my 20 nitrate which i want to be at um i think there's a concern out there i think people are still pretty confused um with nitrate level now nitrites are really poisonous for your fish just like ammonia um, nitrates aren't that poisonous. They are poisonous in high, high levels. You know, I mean, if you have like 200 parts per million nitrate, you probably get some nitrate poisoning, but, um, anywhere between 20 and 80 parts per million nitrate is not that big of a deal. Uh, 80 is pretty high. If you have like no plants or anything in your aquarium, if you have no, um, if you have no plants or anything that's going to uptake that nitrate, then you're going to have a problem and you really want, want to do a water change right away. Uh, whether it's a reef tank or, 
um, a cichlid tank or just a fish only tank, you would definitely want to do a water change at 80 because now it's starting, it's just going to keep going up because you don't have anything to uptake it. But in a planted aquarium, which like, um, which the title of today's episode is why planted aquarium aquascapes, right? Uh, this is why, because I feel a really build an ecosystem I really build an ecosystem with the plants. They sort of finish the aquarium cycle. You know what I mean? The 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 nitrifying bacteria that is in your cycle, right? That is responsible for the cycle of the breaking down of the ammonia, breaking it down into nitrite, then breaking it down into nitrate. The reason why that is important is once you break it down to nitrate, it's super easy to do a water change. Now with plants, oftentimes the plants are just gonna suck up that nitrate super fast. And then it's like, wait a minute, I don't really need to do a water change. Oh, wait a minute, I'm kind of completing the circle of life, right? The circle of life, like like Philadelphia Collins was singing. Um, you start to kind of complete the circle of life where now you've created another life form that's gonna live off that final, final, countdown whatever you want the final countdown right um so that's one of the the the, the huge huge advantage uh to planted aquariums over other style aquariums um you know it's like hey maybe you only got to do a water change once a month maybe once every six months or something i don't know but a lot of times i found that um you know you really can just kind of stabilize the system and Take a lot of that legwork off of yourself of just like putting water into a thing and throwing water away, right? So uh, I'm still trying to complete the loop as much as possible. Um, and that's one of the big reasons for the aquaponics, uh, for the garden, for the greenhouse, for all that kind of stuff. I'm going to keep that circle getting bigger and bigger and bigger to eventually get to a point where I'm like, I'm crazy. Uh, you know, I, maybe it's not me being crazy, but um, maybe it's me not being crazy, but it's like trying to just make the circle bigger and bigger, right? So, <clears throat> uh-oh. Kevin Keener says that was Elton John. Uh, who wrote that, though? Uh, hold on. Oh yeah, that's Elton John. Did he write it though? I thought, I thought Phil Collins wrote it. Let me see here. Hold on, sidebar, sidebar for the chaos. Circle of Life is a song from Disney's, composed by Elton John, with lyrics from Tim Rice. Ah. And Carmen Twilly. All right. It was all Elton John and Tim Rice. That was the guy. Ah, I thought the other guy was Phil Collins on that one. Maybe Phil Collins came later. Eh, well, either way. We'll have to put one uh, pin the tail on the donkey onto Kevin Keener because he's the winner. Winner. A chicken dinner. Right? But, uh, musical sidebar, so sorry about that. We had to get some clarity there. We had to make sure. If it's not Philadelphia Collins, it was the Elton's Johns. <laughs> what does this mic smell like? Foam. This mic smells foamy. Uh, all right. So, Lumpy Dog says, keep my planet tanks at 10 to 40 parts per million nitrates, depending on which tank. There you go. Uh, Aquatasi says, I completely agree with you. Plants are the completion of the process. Yes, I'm trying to extend the completion of the process further and further and further. Uh, eventually, I'll even get to the point where I have mammals, bigger mammals, right? And um, um, I'll get to the point where I have, I'll have bigger mammals and smaller organisms even right does that make sense i don't know i figure at some point in time i'm definitely gonna have to um i'm definitely gonna have to grow some coffee because that somebody <laughs> there's a there's a peruvian company that makes the corvus coffee 
You know that? Uh, that got shared with me the other day, and I'm like, Bob Nicorvis, and I love coffee. I all the, oh. So luckily, um, I had, uh, I had at one point in time, so I was Corvus first, technically, but they were the coffee company first. So I think they started in like 2011 or 2013 or something like that. Uh, so I was just like, mad respect. Those guys got a cool thing going. Well, I'm just have to figure out uh, if JH can go to the Corvus Coffee while he's in Peru and see like, hey, dude, you need to send this guy some coffee. Am I an idiot for trying to send somebody there in person? Probably, but I don't know if they have email or not. A dog is barking out there. I think it worked. Yep, she stopped barking. <laughs> Oh, here she comes. Here she comes. I don't think... Maybe they don't know where I am. I can hear them out there running around. Hey, buddy brownie. What were you doing? Come here. Were you barking? Where were you barking at? Did somebody attack you? Oh. He's okay, Browns. Quit barking. All right. Well, we got the dog. All right. We got the dog in here. Now we're good to go. Time to go to the video show. The video show. It's the video portion of the show. Now I'm small down here in the corner. And I'm small down here in the corner. It's very exciting part of the show where there's video stuff happening. Oh, I just wrote that song, you guys. I just wrote that song, Just Meow. You know? I just wrote it, Just Meow. I think I think it was pretty intensely good and you know I would um I would warn Sir Elton John I'm coming for his Disney job because I write good songs. <laughs> I don't write good songs, you guys. I'm an, I'm a I'm a nincompoop, you know? Um but hey, here's something I'm pretty good at and that's fish tankery. Here's a, a good action shot of part of my fish room. Starting off here at the beginning, what am I doing over there? I've, you know, you guys, I end up with about 50 rummy nose uh, in the overflow on a regular basis. So right now I'm actually doing my weekly thing of capturing them from the overflow. They can't get down into the sump, but they can sometimes get over into the overflow over there and i just kind of net in there for a little while and get them all out and uh get them back into the school so sometimes i notice that the school seems a little bit small i'm like hmm is there maybe only 200 in there instead of 250 <laughs> it's like oh there's a bunch of them in the overflow okay i'll go get them out of there uh it just takes a couple of minutes not a big deal uh but you know we uh, actually you know uh, Corey and I were talking about that yesterday during the Real Fish Talk, that there are screens and things that you can put in the way, uh, but I do find that they are not so, they're not so much of a cumbersome thing in the shrimp tank, right? But in the rummy nose tank, it's like they do have a chance to, you know, get clogged up much quicker. Uh, and that is just dumb when that happens. So, um, I find it to be a little bit, um, uh, just much easier to be like, oh, I'll net some out of the, <laughs> I'll net them out of the overflow from time to time. And, uh, you know, that'll be that. Oh my God. The fishy mailman is here. He just showed up out of the blue. Where you been? Uh oh. Aquatacy just said that YouTube's algorithm instantly hits me with a copyright strike. Oh man. You're right. They're probably going to send a copyright strike to me from me, care of me, right? 
<laughs> Lumpy Dog is wondering if my step stool is OSHA approved for safety. Uh, no, but I do want to remind people there's a step stool right next to the bucket. And uh, I think there's a point in this video where I fall off the bucket like an idiot. Um, but um, yeah, sometimes I just find it uh, a little bit easier just to stand on the bucket. <laughs> Somehow I have a face that you can't even see the Home Depot thing on it. Uh, but it is a bright orange Home Depot bucket. I don't think there's any uh, confusing that, even though you can't see the label. Um, oh, Victoria is in the chat. What is up, Victoria? She's back for the video part. Well, welcome back. Welcome back, Victoria. That was almost turning into Mr. Carter, so... Uh, or Mr. Cotter, sorry, Mr. Carter. Um, Fishy Mailman says, working, you know, making people's, <laughs> making people's dogs, dogs barking junk. <laughs> That's very true. That is very true. Uh, although the mailman was here early today, like I, I mentioned this, uh, in a previous stream, I have a much earlier, um, the, our other mailman was a lady and now our mailman's a man. Um, so it's clearly a different person, um, and he com he comes much earlier in the day. So I'm I'm wondering if he just does the route backwards from the way she did. It. I don't know, but it shows up early. So now it's almost always if some something happens during the show, it's it's an Amazon package or something like that. But uh, I don't think we have any of those coming today because uh, I did want to mention a uh, very big thank you to my mom out there. Uh, wherever she is, I, she doesn't really watch the show, but she's a very big supporter of the show. I, I got a new travel tripod uh, from my mom for my birthday. It came today. I tested it out, and guess what? Guess what, you guys? It works great. It does the tripoding action. Uh, I think most of you guys, I think I've talked about this before, but most of the tripods I have are heavy-duty. They are heavy-duty tripods. Um, because I have a tendency to like when they're in the shop, like one of my old tripods, I dropped like this big giant thing out of the rafters onto it and broke its legs off. Um, and so the ones that I have are all, um, heavy duty, which means that they are heavy, um, which they're fantastic. I love these tripods. Um, Ravelli makes the ones that I use and they are like. Like you could hit this thing with like a hammer and it would just be like, yeah, what do you, what, huh? Yeah, you're cool, right? We're cool. Are we cool? Um, they, they're pretty impervious, but they're very heavy, which is going to be a big time problem, uh, carrying it with me to Germany. So, uh, my mom graciously hooked it up, sent me, uh, a new tripod for my birthday and big thanks to my mom. Thank you very much. And also, uh, if I'm saying a big thanks to anybody in my life, I better say just thank you to, to Vicky Toria because Vicky Toria is she's the light of my life, and she's the big she's the ultimate big time supporter of this show of everything I do. She is the the supporter. She's the number one supporter. You know. So thanks to Vicky, but. As a real quick sidebar, I did want to mention our number one fan, Caleb. Um, if you guys were around for the Real Fish Talk yesterday, uh, Fishing Key Largo um, basically ponied up a matching donation to the GoFundMe for Caleb. Uh, Caleb is a seven-year-old leukemia survivor, still going through treatments, still having to drive um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles to get to his treatments. Um, they have to drive from Montana to Denver, um, in order to get his treatments and stuff. And, um, there is a GoFundMe that we've all been just kind of hammering on to, uh, help out and do what we can. If there isn't anything that you can do financially, I fully understand that. I know what it's like, um, to be living in a van down by the river. Cause you know, I've been that dude before, uh, I've been down that road and, um, you know, so I know what it's like. I know it's like to be completely down on your luck and stuff. Uh, and I'm not saying, Hey, the monetary is the only thing you can do. Cause you guys, there's a totally free thing that you can do. It's to go on there. You could comment, 
you could grab the share. You could share it onto Twitter. You could share it onto Facebook. You could share it onto whatever weird platform you may or may not use. You could throw it out there and let people know, hey, you know, we've got a young man with a family that's going through this real hard time, and maybe you can help him out. Maybe not, but we're going to spread the word. We're going to do what we can. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Because we got to. But we do have a super chat here we got to address before I get back to talking about what's going on in the video. As you guys know, the video will replay, so you won't be missing all of it, um, all of the explanation. But feel free to ask a question in the chat. It doesn't have to be a super chat. Uh, but we got a $5 super chat here from Alvin Alejo. Uh, says, got to miss your live stream and go to work. 8 a.m. Can't have headphones on. I'll catch the replay. Oh, Alvin. Thank you very much. That's like a, it's a really hard thing to relate to, like, understand sometimes. You know, guys, it that's huge, man. That's like huge support. What a, what a sweetheart. You know what I mean? It's like, I can't listen... But I want a super chat to let you know that I'm going to, you know, I'll listen later. Um, thank you, Alvin. That is awesome. And uh, like I said, you know, just doing my best to um, to show up, you know. Uh, Lumpy Dog says, just go big and wear drywall stilts while doing tank maintenance. That would be big time. Uh, no, I don't have any drywall stilts anymore. Uh, back in the day, I used to. Let's see. Fishy Mailman says he could have changed the line of travel to make more sense to him. I've been on some routes that make no sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what he did um, because he shows up like way earlier now, you know, because my mailman used to show up at like four o'clock and now he shows up at like 930, which is vastly different. It would have been like if he showed up at 330, I would have been like, oh, he's just fast or, or something, you know, but that many hours is weird. Uh, uh, the fish man is asking for coupon codes for the coop. Uh, I don't have those, uh, but you can go through my affiliate link if you like. And it says that I sent you, um, I don't know. Uh, Bentley Pascal is that Alternanthera renekii, sometimes called Rosafolia. Yes, that is that red plant. Rosafolia is the street name. Alternanthera renekii is the legit latin name of that red plant i love it very much uh i got some of it from uh drew drew schmidt sent me some drew schmidt uh he sent me some and uh, i've definitely been adapting it it's starting to do fairly well in the 150 the this little the little 60 cube is eh, struggling it's struggling to adapt but uh one more trim i think and will be will be full fully robust um some people saying that I'm getting pretty aggressive with the trimming here. That is the plan. Uh, to get the pogo stem in, um, the way that I want it, this is the pogo stem in stellatus. Uh, this is what you have to do. It's very, very similar uh, to most of the high grow in the way that you trim it and how you can actually, um, you know, that what you can do to, um, you know, aquascape with it. You know, so you plant a stem initially, allow it to grow all the way up to the top of the tank. And you can find the nodes and the nodes would be down the stem near closer to the substrate, you know, so it's probably typically a couple inches from the substrate, which you'll probably see either some extra leaves sprouting, right? Or uh, oftentimes an aerial root will be, will be the easiest things to recognize where the nodes are. Where those nodes are, you actually want to trim right above those, pull the whole top off, and use that as another plant somewhere else, which is what I am doing into the 60 gallon there. And if you cut them in the right spot, right at those nodes right there, guess what? You'll end up with multiple sprouts will come from that point. So you want to make sure that it's at the right height and uh, the things that you need you know, for the other things that are in the in the tank, for the hardscape and the and the look that you want to go for, uh, those multiple sprouts will be much finer and smaller up until they grow longer. Right now, as those grow, 
Then you'll be, once those grow all the way up to the top of the tank, you'll be able to do the exact same thing again. Knock those down, and then you'll have multiple from each one of those. Eventually, you get to the point where you have a thick stock that's probably, you know, three inches up from the substrate, and it will just be all this crazy bush out going from there. Now, from that point, you can actually take that and trim the whole thing off and use it somewhere else if you want, or uh, you can continue to grow the stock, you can move the whole thing, do with it what you like, uh, but that is the best way to propagate and continue it to go, um, uh, continue to move along uh, as it goes. Mr. Chips! Uh-oh. I hear Mr. Chips going a little bonkers outside. I'm not really sure. We'll listen and see if he's all right. Uh, but, yeah, so once you get the plant down to that point, you can actually pull it out, put it in another tank. You can relocate it uh, or do, you know, basically whatever you want with it. Uh, I find it to be the most aesthetically pleasing in what I'm looking for out of my plant, um, you know, whether it's Pogostemon or the... Um, the high grow or anything like that that's that's where i want to promote it to that's where i want to get to with it uh because it just really fills out a nice area of the tank and it becomes really easy to trim that way so you can just keep trimming it down and then um go from there the fishman uh says i only feed kfc gravy okay whatever um gaddis aquatics says does rosafolia yes uh fishing key largo does the same thing with the pepper plants and when they our new plants, they will sprout from every place I cut them. I do this three times and end up with a thick stock and a pepper bush yield easily triples. There you go. That is an exact example right there of above ground terrestrial plants doing the exact same thing. Um, yeah, so it's not, uh, I'm not reinventing the wheel here. It's not something that I necessarily like invented or anything like that. It's just the way that I like to propagate this plant, grow it into like a really cool looking tree that isn't made out of driftwood. It's just made out of itself. Uh, and it, um, <clears throat> becomes really appealing. And also once it, once it grows up to the top of the water level, I don't feel like it's very, um, aesthetically pleasing or anything by that point in time. Uh, Jason Kettner is asking, where are the guppy fry? Uh, I don't know. Inside the mom. I'm pretty sure she reabsorbed them and uh, is never going to give off fry, I'm guessing, uh, at this point. Um, let's see here. Fishy Mailman says, the the coop doesn't do as many codes now since free shipping has been lowered to $70. Yep. Uh, he lowered the free shipping. Uh, so if you order over $70, you just get free shipping. Um, so that's generally like the coupon code for everybody. Uh, Jenny Cakes with a $2 super chat saying any advice on growing styrogyne repens? Um, yeah, my advice is that you want low pH, but you want high calcium and minerals and things. Um, so you do want a mineral, some kind of mineral supplement in order to get it to grow properly. Um, which is fairly easy to do because you could get like wonder shell or even just like a shrimp mineral block or something like that. Um, if you're looking to kind of supplement a little bit, it does need, it does need some of those sort of irrelevant, um, micro fertilizers, basically. What am I thinking of micro? Um, yeah, I don't know. I've been talking too long. What happened? <sighs> micro ferts, basically, whatever. Um, it does need a bunch of that stuff that is the sort of mineral supplements, basically, is what I was saying. Is You just want to add some mineral supplements to make sure that they're in the water for Styron Giant. Otherwise, it will be a pain in the butt. Uh, as it grows straight up out of the substrate, you want to trim the tops off and replant them to get it to propagate and grow laterally instead of vertically. That's going to be the big deal, is that you trim the tops off, replant those. That's a new plant then that stump will grow out laterally. And that's what you want to continue to um, basically convince the plant to do. Not grow up, but grow laterally. That's what you want it to do. Um, it does get really funky when it grows up tall, uh, mainly because it overshadows its lower leaves. And Dan Squire says trace elements. There you go. Yeah, you need the trace elements. I don't know why I was saying microferts. 
But uh, yeah, you need trace elements uh, for sure for Styro Giant. Uh, otherwise, it will just stop growing and just sit there. Um, but as you get it to grow laterally, it'll grow and uh, look really cool and becomes easy to trim and figure out where you want to trim it and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to propagate. Uh, if it grows straight up, it becomes a disaster because the uh, lower leaves get um, the lower leaves get starved from light and then they just fall off. So you end up with these like goofy stalks with the leaves all at the top, you know, <laughs> so it looks super goofy uh, and terrible, really. Uh, Ultimate Fish Keeping is asking, I love the aquarium behind you. Is that six or eight feet long? The aquascape is beautiful. Um, the one against the dark wall there is eight feet. Um, the one I'm working on currently in the video is uh, that one's two feet. The one next to it is five feet. Um, so there's a 150, a 60, and a 240 in the picture here. Zombie Drummer says micronutrients. Yes, I was... <laughs> Getting micro and macro and fertilizers mixed up in my head. Uh, Greg N. with a $2 Canadian Super Chat saying, yay for nodes. Yay. I like it. Yay for nodes. Well, it's $2 Canadian, yay for no nodes. So it's even it's even more impressive. Hold on a second. Uh, sorry, I had to text Rob back. <laughs> Since we got his attention. Um, Jenny Cakes 14 says, Thanks, Joel and the Fishing Man. I've been having a hard time growing them, so that helps. Yeah, that's uh, more often than not, and that that is the issue it's like uh i've almost always had people that are they're like man my ph is right i got the lights i got the good substrate and i'm gonna tell you something one of those people was me many many years ago doing the exact same thing or i was like why isn't this growing and it turns out it's the trace elements it's really the trace elements calcium being one of them uh, but just the trace elements will really help you out with that plant and um help you get it Help you get it sorted out so they can get that growing again because it doesn't die it just sits there basically it's just kind of like yeah all right bud just chilling i'm not no i'm not getting any bigger um you know but that's one of the issues with that plant uh daniel keeping fish any general advice for madagascar lace plant please also seachem excel okay to use with it uh first off yes seachem excel is not a problem to use with a madagascar lace plant it's glutaraldehyde which um, glutaraldehyde, which I saw ADU Aquascape posted a uh, um, posted a video about that just the other day, so you can check that out uh, uh, if you're really excited for it, or you can um, scroll through my videos and find my old glutaraldehyde uh, video, and you can check that out. Uh, but yes. Uh, Excel is totally fine for the Madagascar lace plant. Um, the general advice I would give for Madagascar lace plant is either A, um, you either have a substrate that can really, 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 really handle passing on nutrients with a high cation uh, capacity, something that pro probably has hummus, hummus fired in it in like a kiln, um, like Pluval stratum uh, or something like that. Um, but... Root tabs are going to kind of be your friend here uh, with the Madagascar lace plant. You want to probably throw in some root tabs once every three months or so uh, to be able to just avail them some of that extra nutrient because the Madagascar lace plant does shed a lot. So it sheds a lot of leaves. Uh, so it is almost always in search and kind of hungry for some uh, hungry for some extra nutrients uh, coming up coming up from the, uh, the roots, if you know what I mean. So, um, oh, we do have a cool update here to mention during the show. We don't have a new patronizer. Ginny has upped her patronization during the show. Well, thank you very much, Miss Landgraf. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I, I highly appreciate it, you guys. I know there's a lot of people that are tired of me talking about Patreon, and I get it. Uh, but them's the breaks. Alyssa Bentley, one of her employees got attacked by a bird. <laughs> we got an illustrated book about birds. Uh, all right, I'm a little bit goofy today, you guys. I've been out, I've been out in the sun hauling stuff around. So uh, looks like we're kind of getting to the end of uh, really any of the questions here. So I think we got all of the super chats. We're coming up on the second time through the video. Man, Super Chats are orange today. You guys are so generous. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's move back over here. Make sure this we click the button over here. Well, we've, a bunch of people uh, seem to have gotten bored and left. Oh, my. <laughs> Engagement rate at an all-time low. I don't know. Um, but we are at 140 concurrent. So a thank you to 140 people coming out today. And uh, we'll go back to the main screen here. Holla at your boy and uh, probably head out a couple minutes early today uh, because I'm kind of feeling like I'm winding down. I don't really have too much to talk about at this point. So um, Meat Man is asking wet, dry, sump opinions. Use it uh, as is or put baffles in it and make it a regular sump. Um, I don't know. The arguments that I've gotten from a lot of people about wet dry, um, I'm not going to say that they're unfounded, but I'm just going to say that they're arguments. Uh, I haven't used them. Um, I haven't used them recently. I used them a lot in the past and did not find uh, the upside to be worth the. I didn't find the upside to be worth the hassles that I had to deal with, um, with utilizing the wet dry. So a lot of evaporation and you have issues going on, uh, bio, the, uh, the, uh, bio balls that are in the, um, uh, a wet dry typically get clogged up and have issues. Um, so I didn't find utilizing one to be like super helpful. Like, Whoa, it really just makes it, uh, it makes it work really good you know, um, or makes it work really well. So I, I think, you know, as an example of like my own fish room is that, um, is that I don't, uh, what's the word? Well, I, I don't use them in my own fish room because I, I just didn't find them to be like really, really helpful. Um, uh, Kelsey Clark says, didn't get notified. Uh, one of the big things that, that, that you guys need to do if you want to get notified. And I'm not saying just my channel, just whatever channel you guys want to watch, uh, you really have to go to the homepage and click that little bell button and you, you there's like a drop down now. So you might have notifications turned on, but if you go look at that drop down, it'll say like occasionally or randomly or whatever, you have to turn it to always. So you always get a notification that's going on. Um, YouTube found out that them sending out too many notifications made people leave YouTube. So they've made it like way more selective now. Um, so they're like way more selective now about how they send out their notifications. So you would need to go and literally, um, littering and littering and, Littering and clicking the notification button. Um, so you really need to um, uh, go there and make sure that the notification is um, is clicked on. Jenny Cakes says, yeah, I've been using Easy Green and Osmocote root tabs, so I need to try to double check to see how much calcium is in it. I have not trimmed them, uh, so we'll try that too. Uh, Okay, and somebody's saying, please, no Osmocote. Yeah, I would step away from the Osmocote. It, uh, there's a lot of downside with Osmocote. You could be having good success now, but there, def there definitely is almost always a, uh, a big-time downside coming, looming. Uh, Roger M Martinez says, crystal shrimp in 7.6 pH 5-gallon tips. Uh, my tip with that would be don't do that. Uh, that is not good. No. 
you're going to need minimum 7 pH. And crystal shrimp in a five gallon is just not a great idea. You can pull it off for a while, a good amount of time probably. Um, but the evaporation of things will catch up with you, especially like you see that sun shining out there, especially with the sun time months. Maybe you get some overtime at work. Maybe you're at the park and it's been a couple of days and you skip some water change and get evaporation. Five gallons of water is like zero buffer. So there's like zero, zero, zero. Like I'm, oh, I'm just going to like skip for a couple of days. There's no error is gigantic in a nano tank. So uh, I don't recommend to put uh, crystal shrimp into a uh, tiny tank like that. Uh, Y is asking, you think Stratum and Amazonia is from the same manufacturer? Are they both made in Japan? Yes. Yeah, and I, I think they're from the same manufacturer. They seem to come from the same plant, even though uh, they're coming from supposedly different different portions of the plant and stuff, which is fine. I, you know, people get upset. People get super upset. They're like, duh, uh. And it's like one of those things, like Corey was over in China, and a lot of things are made by the same place. It's just the reality of the world, the manufacturing. It's how it works, you know? People um, people think that, like, the car manufacturers are exclusively Ford or something, you know? It's like, no. <laughs> like, it just doesn't work that way. Um, and there's just not that many people that buy... Um, there's not that many people that buy uh, aquarium substrate, so there isn't that many people making like a whole bunch of different kinds of it. Um, so uh, my guess would be, my guess would be they're totally different and made um, independently. Hello, is that Vicky? Okay, somebody came in the door. I heard the alarm go off. And don't worry, I'm okay. It's just Vicky Toria. She's not going to kill me. Uh, Ed's Fish is asking, are Neocaridina Car Caridina, okay at 7.6 pH? Yes. Uh, cherry shrimp can handle 7.6 at not a big problem, as long as your water's clean uh, and you're taking care of it. Uh, why I was asking, yeah, people got upset when I was told... Uh, when I told one of my Facebook groups, yes, yeah, people will get upset. Uh, people just get super upset about it. Uh, you know, it's proprietary, but I followed it down the rabbit hole as far as I could get without like physically going uh, overseas to go find out what was going. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you, are you whispering? Okay. I've been hiding the puppy dog. Okay, well, come say hi and don't whisper weirdly from the doorway. <laughs> hey, babe, good to see you. Hey. So much better looking in person. So much better looking. Do I look bad on? Do I look bad on the internet? <laughs> oh, God. Vicky said I look terrible on the internet. That's not what I said. Oh. Um. Uh, uh, but good to see you, babe. I'll be over there in a minute. Uh, but yeah, what was I talking about? So. I, I followed that as far as I could down the rabbit hole without like physically going there. Um, and they assure me. It's coming from two different places, but um, it's that same thing. Um, <clears throat> it's that same thing when a bunch of people had all this backlash at me um, when you know I was like, "Well, Seachem Matrix is just pumice," because it is. Yes, it's a proprietary pumice that they clean and put in a bucket, but it is pumice. It literally is pumice. Even they told me it's pumice, but no, it's their proprietary pumice that they get from a special place and then acid wash it and send it out to you. So, um, you know, and a bunch of people got super mad at me and I'm like, I still use Seachem's products. I use safe. I use prime. Um, I mean, I for sure use those two, but there's a bunch of other Seachem products I have in my fish room right now. I have their magnesium. Uh, I have their calcium. I have a couple other things too. Like I use their products. Okay. And I'm not mad at Seachem, and I'm certainly not mad at Stratum or Amazonia. I'm not mad at either of those. I mean, these are companies operating within the bounds of them making money and stuff. Is what they do. Um, you know, and people are like, I don't understand why you're bad-mouthing Seachem. And I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure that that company 
saw that they could get their that they could get some pumice and people would buy it. And does it work? Yes, it works. It's biomedia. Um, so it's not that big of a deal, but they are a company. You know what I mean? They're a company that's like, oh, well, here's another thing that we could sell and probably make money. We're already sending a truck over there with Prime and Safe. Maybe we send more stuff over there to those guys. And I don't fault them for that. That's not, I don't think it's bad. Um, it, you know, so I don't think it's a big deal. And I don't think it's something that anybody should get like pissed about, but I just, you know, I've, I've encountered like so much, so much like hate mail and nonsense from people, um, like over the years because of stuff like that, that I'm just like, dude, chill out. Like, it's not a big deal. It's not a bad thing. I'm just saying (laughs) it's probably from the same production place. This one's cheaper. So buy the cheaper one, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like, so I don't know, maybe Amazonia should lower their price and make it more available. I don't know, but, you know, that's none of my business. I'm just saying this one's cheaper, and it seems to it seems to do the exact same thing that, that Amazonia does, and it seems to be coming from the same place. I don't know 100%, and I'm not saying 100%. I'm just saying it seems to be coming from the same place, so it's probably the same stuff. I don't know. Uh, Dan Squire saying VW, Sharan, and Ford Galaxy, same car. Yep. Uh, Dan Squire says the Mazda 121 is a Ford Fiesta. You know, that's a perfect example right there. You think you think Mazda and Ford are supposed to be two completely different companies? Well, they're in cahoots to utilize the same equipment to make their cars because it's cheaper to do it. You don't want to build more factories. You want to utilize the factories that you have as best you can. Do I think that's good? I don't know, and I don't care because it's just not my problem realistically when you get down to it like i don't own a corporation so i don't know i'm just some dude wandering around i'm just trying to help you guys out get the best deal that you can <laughs> uh Hermes borgnino says hate mail about fish keeping madness yes i'm yeah for sure i've gotten tons of it uh i've so a, bu- a bunch of the hate mails from people that you would recognize too which is always funny um let's see we've got a brand new patreonizer brand new to the patreon during the show today mr chad Crotz. oh thank you very much i appreciate it oh my god there's mass aquariums look out bud <laughs> good to see you thanks thanks mass good for showing up if you missed it we did a, a live stream just a little while ago uh you should go back and check that out if you want to hear uh hear us Going a little back and forth across the country. Look at the technology these days. It's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jimmy S. just says hate. Oh, he's angry. He's angry, you guys. Uh, let's see. Um, oh yeah. And you know what, on the, on the lines of like, like people lashing out and like sending out angry letters or this or that, or the other thing. Um, I think a big portion of what that is, is that boils down to, uh, a study that I read a long time ago that had to do with American loyalty. Like one of the really weird things that goes on in the United States is this, crazy loyalty and i think a lot of it has to do with like the false patriotism type stuff that goes on like you know i'm saying sure be proud to be an american like you know be proud to be a good person just be be, you know but remember that we are all a part of the world uh but one of the weird things that they found out was is that even at price increases consistent price increases american loyalty will it, it won't send any consumers away. You know what I mean? So like if the grocery store just kept raising the prices 5% every month, n- no one goes away because the Americans just keep going there. Like they're just so desperately loyal to something that they like uh, to buy, um, which is odd because it's, you know, everything's marketed in the United States that we're free and we're free to do whatever we want. Except the weird thing is it's like ingrained in us to just do the exact same thing every day and be loyal no matter what. Um, which is odd. It's a weird dichotomy, but, uh, I think that's what the people are lashing out in regards to. It's like the people that go to the exact same gas station every single day, regardless of, you know, 
the price of the gas. Like they could, they found that if you just keep raising the price, you could get to like double the price and people will still be going there and buying gas because of that loyalty. So, um, you know, it's a weird business study that I was involved in, you know, for restaurants and stuff like that. But, um, it's pretty interesting, you know, uh, but I think that's what, where that anger comes from is that people feel like, you know, oh, I have this loyalty to this company and they've always done good for me and I'm going to, I'm going to fight back, you know? And it's like, I don't, who are you fighting? I don't, I don't want to fight anybody, you know? So, um, Congo, the Jormund, Jormund gang says, uh, I think it's because people equate same plant to same assembly line. Uh, a number of phones are probably made in the same factories, but obviously they all have different features, reliability, etc. Yeah. I think, you know, uh, that's, that's a big part, um, of some of the stuff that goes on, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting situation to find out like what's really going on, you know? All right, guys. Well, I don't know. I've gone way off the deep end here rambling about all sorts of nonsense. Uh, we don't have any super chats to catch up on. I want to make sure I get all of those. All right, cool. We're cool with that. Um, looks like we're Gonna head out a couple minutes early. I don't know. It's 75 degrees and sunny out. I've, I don't feel like it's a bad idea to cut out a couple minutes early and go outside and do some circles in the some donuts in the yard. You know what I mean? Run around, bah, freak out, uh, and have a good time. Do 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 do. Oh, uh, Reggie saying, uh, Joel, I'm really hoping you have mass of uh, uh, Mike from Mass Aquariums on Real Fish Talk soon. I'd love to have them out. Uh, we have to, we, Corey and I made the decision to not do the Skype stuff. Um, we just feel like it's a much better show if people are around in person. Uh, he and I were trying to do the Skype between each other. And believe you me, I'd rather not have to make uh, a two hour drive up there and an hour and a half drive back to do the show. Um, I would personally rather not have to do that that's why we uh, initially were doing it through uh the internet but it just it just is not as good as when people are in the actually in the room so uh we're making a concerted effort to get people into the room for real fish talk um just because we feel like it's a much better product so um and you know right now the budget's basically zero to do the <laughs> to do the real fish talk so we can't really like fly anybody out or anything like that so um it would be good to get some people out uh, and uh, have them on the show. And Mass, Mike from Mass, is more than welcome uh, to come out and be on the show. We're just trying to um, also um, coordinate with people, like if they happen to be in town for business or something, like to go, like, hey, fit it in, you know what I mean? And there have been some pretty big people um, that have been out into town and they didn't want to do the show. So, you know, some people want to do it. Some people don't. So, um, oh, we do have this one super chat here, uh, from the fishy mailman. Uh, I j just purchased some Revulus Zivadudus, uh, uh, weird, um, killifish that I've never, I've never even read before. So I know I've never kept these before. I ordered them from, uh, LR Brett's, which is cool. Um, glad to hear that. And, um, but no, I have never kept that fish and don't think that I've been around them, uh, in person that I can know of. Um, I don't think that I have seen them before, so I don't have a lot of pointers there. Uh, but I can give you kind of the basic pointers for killifish. Uh, you do want to feed um, live-ish food like once a week and keep them on, um, you know, keep them on quality, um, quality dry food the rest of the time. You don't want to overfeed them with too much, um, you know, worms or things like that because they really start to get bananas uh, if you feed them too much. You know, too many blood worms, too many uh, black worms, anything like that, um, that is like really high, really, you know, that, that live-ish food and stuff like that. They start to get just kind of buck wild and they'll, they'll start jump, they'll jump from your tank, which is the, the easy way to explain it. Um, they, they start to kind of spaz out and jump out of your tank. Uh, 
But um, then other than that, you want to keep the tannins high. So you want to have some good leaf litter. You want to make sure to order some uh, some almond leaves. You want to make sure that your temperature is legit. One of the big issues with the temperature things is that those crazy temperature swings, once again, they will drop eggs and jump out of your tank. <laughs> they think... They think you're coming up on the dry season, which means it really motivates them into their cycle because where they come from dries out completely. So they end up dying and they have to jump puddle to puddle and think they do this crazy environment where they come from. Uh, so you need to keep them super consistent. Lots of leaf litter so they can scatter their eggs on a regular basis as opposed to just that blitzkrieg and then jump out of the tank. Uh, because they'll jump out of the tank when you're not there. You know what I mean? So you just come back to a crispy dry fish and, uh, that's the worst, right? Um, so, uh, that would kind of be my advice. And I would also not like overfeed with, um, super rich food. I would try to keep them like mine right now are on, uh, new life spectrum flake and, uh, Thera a, those are the two that I feed. And then sometimes I feed live food and like blood worms and stuff like that. But it really is sparing because, um, we don't want them to get too buck wild. You basically want them, you want them at like 90% or 85% and they'll be scattering eggs, you know, not all in one blast. Um, they'll get super aggressive if they're like fully, 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 fully like charged up, you know, um, they get super aggressive. They'll have a tendency to probably kill one or scare, you know, scare them out to evacuate completely and go out. Um, they will live, um, they will live about two and a half, three years. Um, but they are a seasonal fish. So they, they, in the wild, they only, you know, we'll live like six months or something like that, and they'll dry out. Um, uh, the fish fishman says Blitzkrieg means lightning war. And I know what the Blitzkrieg means. That's I was using it. They use the Blitzkrieg with their eggs. They send all their eggs all at once. Hey, man! Um, that's why I was using that word. They send all the eggs all at once, then jump out of the tank. <laughs> uh, so that would be my advice uh, and just make sure that you keep the temperature stable lots of leaf litter lots of tannins and the dog is barking so that's got to mean it's the end of the show all right guys thank you very much for everybody coming out have a fantastic night out there uh hope to have a short video out for you tomorrow but no guarantees because i, n I never guarantee a short video i just say hopefully we got another one coming out hopefully we got another one coming out uh it has been two hours if you have a comment Post it down below once the video has processed, and I will get to it um, after. typically after a couple of days. Um, I, I typically respond to all of the comments down below. Feel free to post as many comments down below as you like. Hit the share button. Hit the subscribe button. I need your guys' help. I'm only at... We're, I mean, it's amazing that we're at 12,000 subscribers, but I gotta. we got to up the ante here so that I can do things like yell at Seachem in person instead of um, in old videos, you know what I mean? And be like, hey, what are y'all doing here? You tripping? What's happening here, Fluval? What are you doing? Um, so we need to get that share and all that stuff going on. It's just, I hate to ask for it. It's not even something I really even want to talk about. Like, it makes me feel gross where I'm like, hit the like button, Ugh. you know. But it's just the the nature of the business now. It's just like what we got to do. So, um, and thanks to the new and old patronizers and everybody for super chatting today. Uh, thanks to all the very generous super chats from Daryl Dimer, James Neesham, the zombie drummer, Megan Ness, Alvin Alejo, Johnny Cakes, or sorry, Jenny Cakes, not Johnny Cakes. I'm thinking of Johnny Cakes. I'm hungry. Uh, I've got uh, Greg N here, uh, Daniel Keeping Fish, and the fishy mailman. Thank you guys for your generous uh, support. I very much appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, come, coming out and chatting today. I uh, love you guys. Uh, our highest concurrent today was only 162. So um, seems seems low, but sun's coming out, man. So I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever hit that 1,000 live, but, yeah, we'll see what happens. I uh, hope everybody has a fantastic night out there. Don't get too crazy. Don't light off any fireworks in your living room or anything crazy like that. And I will talk to you 
Later. Dan Squires, have you seen that button? Where's CJ? CJ Black, did you watch till the end?